Hello Year 3, welcome back to your maths videos. Today our learning objective is, can I use a number line to represent fractions beyond, beyond one whole? So far we've looked at fractions up to one whole and today we're going to look at fractions beyond one whole and how to represent them. So, um, where would one fifth be on the number line? Use the bar model to help you. For this lesson, before we start, can you make sure you have something straight that you could use um, as a ruler if you do not have a ruler at home? Um, and you will need paper because you will need to draw your own number lines today. So where would one fifth be on the number line? Pause the video, have a think, look at the bar model and use the bar model to help you identify where one fifth would be. Okay, so by looking at the bar model, we can see that the whole is divided into five equal parts. And we know that before even counting because it says one fifth and the denominator is five. And each section then represents one fifth. So if this whole section if up to here represents one fifth, where would one fifth be on the number line? Well, we know that this whole section represents one fifth and one fifth ends here and it goes into the next fifth. So one fifth would be right here on the number line and the next fifth would be here and the next fifth would be here and the last one here. So we can label it the same way as well. Starting from zero, this would be one fifth. What would be the next fifth if we were counting up? Two fifths. and three-fifths and four-fifths up to one whole. What would the fraction be for one whole? Do you remember what rule we can follow to represent fractions that represent one whole? Well, the numerator and the denominator would be the same. So this is what we know so far. Okay, so we've counted up to one whole so far and this up to the yellow line, this line represents thirds. So it's going up in thirds, one third, two third, three thirds, which is the same as one whole. And we have images here to show us the fractions as well. And we can see when we get to three thirds, the whole shape is shaded. So it represents one whole. But the number line can also carry on. So the number line does not have to end there. What do you think by using our knowledge that we have already reached one whole and that each of our shapes are divided into three equal parts as well as this shape as well as this shape which fraction do you think we could write to represent this part of the number line this notch on the number line pause the video have a go and um play again when you're ready okay so as we can see here each of these shapes are still divided into three equal parts. So which one of my two numbers is not going to be affected? Which number will stay the same? The denominator will stay the same because each shape still has three equal parts. What would my numerator be? Well, my numerator was three when I got to one whole, three thirds. 
So here I have got one, two, three, four parts. So I have got one whole, which is three parts, plus one other part on top, on top that is shaded. So I have got four thirds. This is called a top heavy fraction, top heavy, because the numerator is greater than the denominator. Did you think of any other ways that you could write this fraction? Some of you may have also thought, well, this shape represents one whole. So we could also write, represent this notch as one whole, which is represented here, because we know that three thirds equals one whole, and one third, because we can see that when we look at this shape, one part of it is um, shaded. So we can also write this as one whole and one third, which is called mixed fractions. Mixed fractions. So this is a top heavy fraction and this is a mixed fraction. Both of them represent the same thing. Now, without drawing the number line, can you have a go at right at uh, carrying on the pattern, carrying on by counting up in fractions and drawing images to represent each of them? Um, if you do have a ruler, it's easier for you to draw a number line, but don't worry about drawing the number line at this point. Play the video when you're ready. Okay your second activity. The number line has been divided into equal parts. Label each part correctly. If you have a ruler, well, first thing we need to do is to count how many equal parts uh, the line is divided into so that we can draw our own. Starting from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So our line is divided into six equal parts. If you have a ruler at home, you could maybe draw a line that's six centimeters long, and then each notch could be one centimeter long. Or if you don't have a ruler at home, you could use a straight object to draw your own lines, and then you could label the beginning part zero, and you could even use your finger to create the equal parts. So you could create finger spaces. This could be your first part. And then you move your finger. And then this could be your second part. And then you move your finger until you have your six parts. Pause the video. Draw your line and then have a go at labeling each part. Okay. So, as we counted before, we have one, two, three, four, five, six equal parts. So, what's the first part going to represent? This part of my number line. If we have six equal parts and we are talking about one part of it, what fraction am I talking about? Well, we already know we have six equal parts. So that's going to be my denominator. And so far I'm talking about one part of it. So I've considered one part. This is one sixth. What would the next one be? Okay. If you had a go at doing this challenge, we will talk about it in the next slide. Pause the video if you want to have a go at the challenge before the next slide. Okay, so here um, it says label each part correctly. Here we can see that unlike this number line, which goes from zero to one, this number line goes from zero 
to two. So the two represents two holes rather than one. So somewhere along this line between zero and two, we need to find where one hole would be. How would we know that? Well, we first need to count how many parts are between zero and two. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I know that there are two holes. There are two holes that are divided into six parts. So where would one hole be? Well, one hole would be halfway between zero and two, and I know that there are six parts. What's half of six? Three. One, two, three. So this is where one hole would be, and then I can see what fraction each of these lines represent. Okay, these are your independent activities. Have a go at doing them. Make sure you take pictures of your work to put on tapestry for us to see and upload your work on Instagram and Facebook if you would like to. And uh, join me in the next video where we continue learning about fractions and focus on equivalent fractions. Well done, year three. Bye.